Welcome to the Mile High webinar uh, with Dr. Daniel Knowles and the, uh, I'm very pleased to be here with Dr. Tim O'Shea and uh, you can see me and Dr. Tim at Mile High August 22nd to 24th just outside Denver in the Mile High City and uh, that's August 22nd and 24th and at www.milehighchiro.org. And Dr. Tim O'Shea, you are all over the world. Um, I, I love getting your newsletter and I just read through the whole thing, the newest edition. You always have such wonderful insights in there. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you've been up to lately. Well, I just came back from uh, a three week uh, lecture tour in Europe and I spoke at uh, I spoke at two, I, I was at, I attended three of the chiropractic schools in Europe and I spoke at two of them and I did another series of lectures in Windsor, right near Windsor Castle outside London. And so a summary, I know it's a long story, a summary of this is in my May newsletter on the site, The Doctor Within under newsletters. And um, I, you know, I, I did that, I wanted to, I, I kind of know this global agenda that's going on with chiropractic and it's very uh, frustrating uh, from a historical basis and I wanted to, you know, get it firsthand to, to add some fuel to the fire, so to speak. And there's kind of like the good news and the bad news and I go through both of those topics uh, in the newsletter. So I recommend people read the main newsletter. <laughs> And, you know, you looked, not only you were lecturing and inspiring, you also had a lot of fun there, and you got to see a lot of great people. Uh, Jean-Pierre Mearsman is a good friend. I'm glad you got to see him and learn from him. Yeah. Um, and to be at Windsor Castle and be at Barcelona School and out in Madrid, you just, you just get around. And yeah. um, I, I will say this, I'm always inspired when I hear you speak. I've heard you speak at New Beginnings several times and, and several other things. I know you're going to be at Focus this, this coming year, uh, which I look forward to being there with you. You're at all of these events. Why do you feel it's important for chiropractors today to go to mile high and things like that because of this global agenda to marginalize and trivialize and dilute the original chiropractic message that is so pervasive in the world today and so at these at these events we really need to get inspired to become reconnected with the original principles that have made chiropractic uh, the the important um, health care model that is it has been for the last century. We have all these destructive forces that are trying to tear chiropractic down. And I, it is so, so essential, especially for the young chiropractors. I mean, any of the young chiropractors, they're coming out of school. They have no idea what chiropractic is because the schools have never told them what it is. And it's Half a travesty. School, it's a travesty. I know. Half the schools today, Dr. Danny, as you know, they've expunged philosophy from the curriculum. Number two, they're teaching them there's no such thing as subluxation. If there's no such thing as subluxation, then why should we teach you how to adjust because you don't want to do it anyway. You're going to hurt people and they're going to sue you. That's the kind of attitude about chiropractic that so many, I would say at least at least half the students graduating from schools in the world today are coming out with this knowledge. And when they see somebody like me or me and Tim Young, we have this techniques, hands-on technique seminar, and they, they, they make their first adjustment after, you know, going all the way through school or being in practice for two years. You know, it really generates excitement and a reconnection with the power and the abundance and the scope of traditional chiropractic. That's all I'm trying to do. You know, uh, what, what does BJ, BJ say? The, the sacred the sacred trust, carry the torch, keep it alive. Well, and, and like you said in your newsletter, our job is only to find and correct vertebral subluxations. And then when you have an educational system where people aren't even learning how to do that, it really creates a problem for people to be successful in practice. Exactly. They're, they're spending all this time, all this money in school, and they're coming out with without the tools that they need in order to have a successful practice. Well, and, and I, I want to say this, and, and I, I, I know you'll be excited about this. 
One of the reasons why I scheduled the Mile High event when I did was because I realized that we're pretty close proximity to many chiropractic schools. We're in close proximity to Palmer, like driving distance, um, Parker, um, TCC. Um, and so we have a lot of students coming out. And this can be a great new hub for students to get immersed in the philosophy and hear from wonderful people like you. Yeah, so to those students, my message is, if you're kind of confused uh, because uh, maybe the school that you're going to is kind of uh, ambivalent or the message is, is kind of equivocal and you're not really sure about what your professional identity as a chiropractor is, what special and unique service do you have to offer the world that no one else has, you know, that's going to be the basis of you surviving in business, well, then you need to attend the, this seminar and all these seminars that we're talking about, Focus, you know, CalGEM, all of them. And, and what are you going to be sharing? What are you, what are you going to be sharing at Mile High? I don't know. How much time do I have? You get an hour. <laughs> You people get an hour of Tim O'Shea, which is Whoa. amazing. Well, I can I can give an introduction to to my full day live and online seminars, which are there's like four different subjects, uh, including the vaccines, childhood immunology, the chiropractic philosophy and neurology seminar, uh, the the uh, adjusting the full day adjusting hands on technique seminar. These kind of uh, topics. I will be including in my allotted one hour. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and so people, some people watching this know you, but some may not know you at all. Uh, oh, well, I'm insane. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm certifiable. So what was your book? You wrote a book on vaccines just for our audience. What was the name of your book? Yeah, the name of the book is Vaccination is Not Immunization. I'm all out of them here. I would show you one. <laughs> And uh, it's available on my website, thedoctorwithin.com. And that has been a very hot topic in Colorado specifically because there's been a big movement to take away the personal exemption rights in Colorado. Um, how do you feel about that? Well, do you have a flamethrower? <laughs> <laughs> I'll go look for one. <laughs> no. Uh, I was I was uh, active in that whole uh, political upheaval that we had two years ago in 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 California, as well as the one before that in Washington State, which was the first state to eliminate the personal beliefs uh, exemption. Um, they they say it's not it's not eliminated, but here's the thing. Here's what they're really trying to do. They're trying in Colorado to trying to pass the same law that they passed in Washington State and in California, saying that okay. If you're a parent and you don't want to vaccinate your child, you can still have a personal beliefs, uh, philosophical exemption, but you need permission from a medical doctor to have a philosophical belief. So a medical doctor has to sign a form giving you permission to have a philosophical belief about vaccines. I mean, is this Nazi Germany or what? But it's passed in several states. You know, it's on the books in your state. There are two states I know that, it, it, that have rejected it, uh, Vermont and I think it was Arizona. They have both rejected it. But I say in the next couple of years, this is going to be up in every state legislature because it, it, it's, it's, uh, there's, there's such this, it's like this juggernaut of pressure that um, it's, uh, it, it usually passes through without much opposition. So for, if you know some activists in your state in Colorado who are interested in organizing opposition because it's really it's the end of medical freedom Danny it's like it's a slippery slope you pass this law saying that you need a medical doctor's permission in order to have a philosophical opinion on vaccine for your own children I mean what's next uh, you you have cancer or something and you decide to take the holistic route to follow uh, uh, for, for treating cancer, your own cancer. You don't want to do chemotherapy. You don't want to do radiation. And they, the, the next law may well be that you would need, you know, some medical doctor's permission in order to refuse chemotherapy and radiation. I mean, it's just one thing after another. Well, I know. And this is supposed to be the land of the free, right? 
you know that's so we so we say um, yeah it's it, slowly looking like it's less free than anywhere else and here you want to take away your freedoms for your own body and your family's bodies in terms of health and your health care choices uh, it's a it's a travesty and you know it's really the thing is my view in chiropractic is chiropractic's foundational principle the the major premise when that when it comes down to it that really to me is about trust and it's about that we trust the innate within that we trust life and that we want to make sure that the expression of life is is not interfered with and this is all about fear and the people that want to pass these laws on us that trust our body they're coming from a place of fear absolutely and i'll just tell you one quick thing about the trick get that will you one quick thing about the uh, about the uh, you're a busy guy. Don't worry about it. I know, no. This is this <laughs> my, my. I got to tell you this. Um, they pretend like this exemption issue. This this is how they get it passed. They pretend like this is an issue about whether vaccines or are, are safe or or not. So if you believe in vaccines, you better pass this issue. But that's not what it's what the issue really is about from a political standpoint. The issue here is it's about medical freedom. It's about medical freedom. So we still, you know, people still ex accept the idea that uh, that you know whether or not to vac whether or not to vac whether or not to vaccinate is is a uh, is a personal choice is a personal choice that's the primary issue so if you don't want to vaccinate just don't vaccinate but this thing about making you have to get a medical doctor's a you know permission in order to have in order to exempt your child from vaccines this is all about the end of medical freedom that's the whole point right right and and it's a travesty and so what um with, with you and you to do all the things that you do you have to have an incredible, passionate, driving force. Why? What is, what's, your, what's your why that makes you push so hard and, and inspire so many? <laughs> I think that, I think back to that one uh, Harrison Ford movie, Patriot Games, they ask him the same question, and he, I'd say that it's probably rage. <laughs> rage is my driving force because. I always say that people should just shoot me because I know too much. You know, I, I don't get my opinions primarily from Yahoo News and Google headlines like most people do. You know, I really travel the world. I really, I'm researching all the time. I'm doing the primary uh, amount of the, 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 the reading from the original primary sources. I really know what's going on. And um, it's just the frustration is that the answers to these uh, simple, basic questions, essential questions about healthcare, lie just below the surface. Just below the surface. You just have to do a little reading, a little research to understand what is really happening in any of these areas. The areas of holistic nutrition, genetically modified foods, chiropractic, childhood vaccines. You have to, you have to go one level below what you're reading every day in Yahoo News and on Google. And most people are too lazy, too conditioned, too busy Facebooking or whatever to do that research. And that's the real frustration. So that's my primary motivation to break through that barrier and get people to, just to go down one level below the superficial daily conditioning. Wow. You know, and, and I am so glad that you're going to be out here in Colorado, that you're going to join us in August, that you're going to help inspire and lead people. And you have a, you're quite a busy itinerary. So for you to take your valuable time and be out here, I mean, between, uh, between doing all the programs you're doing and doing your adjusting programs um, and all your writing, uh, how do people, if people, I know you send out your email to a lot of people, but there are a lot of people that still aren't on it. If people want to subscribe to that, how do they subscribe to your, your email list? That's very easy. Just go to the doctorwithin.com and down in the left hand on the home page, down in the left hand column, there's a box. You just write your email in. In addition to that, all my newsletters are archived. So on the home page, there's a button that says newsletter archived. So they're all there. And 
they're chock full of content that people can utilize in their own offices to educate practice members. If you want Absolutely. content to, for your daily communication with your staff or daily communication with your patients or for your own workshops, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff in there that, that people can, you know, use that you're such an incredible resource. And, and that's, that's one of the great things about you is the resource you are for two chiropractors. Um, so I, I'd like to, you know, close up with, with asking, asking you about this, when you, you talked in your newsletter about success and you've seen chiropractors struggle and you've seen chiropractors be really successful and thrive, what's, what's the difference? What makes it, what, the ones that thrive, what's different about them? Yeah, that's a very good question. I, I, that's an excellent question. I define an excellent question as the one that I know the answer to. <laughs> The, the, the primary criterion that separates the successful chiropractor from the guy who's always going to struggle, here it is right here. Are you ready? A strong basis in philosophy, a strong understanding of the traditional principles, the connection between universal intelligence, innate intelligence. These aren't just words. These are events that you see in your office all day, every day, in front of your own eyes. And if you if you never really get, I, I, we talk in the, I talk in this one. We, Tim Young and I we talk in our seminar about the transitional experience. And I, I make everybody in the room close their eyes, and I go, okay, everybody close your eyes. Now I want everybody in the room, if you've when, if, have you had the transitional experience in your life in which so, something happened in your life that you witnessed that you realized for the first time two things? Number one, chiropractic was a very real and valuable event, uh, profession. And number two, you realized I can actually learn this skill to deliver chiropractic to the world. And it's usually about half and half. Half the people in seminars have had that transitional experience. The other half have never had it, you know. So it, it, I understand that. I really understand that because I was the same way before that event happened to me, before that experience happened to me. So this is the one, number one distinguishing feature that will distinguish the people who are going to be successful in practice and those who are not. And so, that, again, that's the importance of events like yours and like Focus and DCS, um, that these provide... Uh, a vehicle for these, the possibility for these transitional experiences to occur. Excellent, excellent. Well, we're grateful you're going to be there. August 22nd and 24th, um, Denver, Colorado, www.milehighchiro.org is where people can register. And for people to get the opportunity to hear you and um, get to connect with you there is invaluable. And so we appreciate you um, and all you do in chiropractic. Uh, are there any last remarks you'd like to share? Uh, that right back at you, Danny. The profession appreciates what you're doing for our future as well. And everybody out there is listening to this. Get your ass to Mile High Chiropractic. This, what is that? It's August. <laughs> and uh, hey, if people like Colorado in the winter for skiing, you oh. love it in the summer. Beautiful. It's beautiful. I've been there. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll see you then. You have an excellent day. Keep, keep keeping on and keep changing lives, Tim. I so appreciate you. Yeah.